welcome back or welcome to the channel if you are joining us for the first time welcome my name is t and this is my channel crumpets tea and sewing you can also follow me by that handle over on instagram i'll put the link to my instagram account in the description box below and you can go over and check me out so in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you the very first episode of the sew wardrobe series this is a series that i am hosting throughout the remainder of this year with the lovely crystal and she goes by at crystal sews and stuff i'll make sure that i include her link in the description box below to her youtube channel so you can go over and follow her youtube her youtube account because she will be posting content on her youtube channel pertaining to this sew wardrobe series so in the very first episode we're doing the simplicity 8285 and this is a pattern that has five different variations there's a jacket a vest a top, a pair of pants, and a skirt. I am going to be doing the jacket for this tutorial. So that's this view right here. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you all the pieces that we need for this particular view. Stay tuned because I will also be uploading a video of the pair of pants on my channel later on, probably next week. So stay tuned for that. Remember, we're going to be working on jacket D. So we need all the pieces that are related to jacket D. So as you can see here for jacket D, we will need piece 10, which is the front, piece 11, which is the back, piece 12, that's the pocket, piece 13 is the front facing, piece 14 is the back facing, piece, uh, sorry, piece 15 is the sleeve so that is all of the pieces that we need for jacket d so once you cut all those pieces out make sure that you prepare them so now that you have your pattern pieces all traced out or cut out i like to trace my pattern pieces out and i like to keep my original uh, patterns and i put my original patterns back into the envelope and i use my traced pieces because i do all my adjustments on my traced pieces so um one of the things that I want to note before we get any further into the video is make sure that you transfer all your markings. So on this front, this is the front piece right here, which is piece 10. As you can see here, this is piece 10. Uh, make sure all your markings, like your darts, your notches, any dots or uh, notches are all transferred onto the paper. I'm not going to go into instructions on how to shorten or lengthen a garment in this particular video. I'm just assuming that you're going to choose the best possible size that corresponds to your size um, on the tissue paper. Don't go by the body measurements on the back of the envelope. Go by the tissue paper finished measurements. Let's go ahead and uh, cut out our pieces and then assemble our garment. Okay, so now that we have all the pieces cut out, we're just going to go ahead and make sure that we have everything that we need to assemble the jacket together. So I just wanted to point out a few things before we go on to the next step and we start to assemble the jacket together. Just make sure that you have your front facing and your back facing and also make sure that you apply interfacing to both the front facing and the back facing. You're going to have one piece for the back facing and that should have been cut on fold and you should have also cut your inner facing for it on fold as well. Just make sure that you follow the manufacturer's directions on how to apply your inner facing. So you're going to do that for your back facing as well as your front facing and your front facing you should have two pieces one for the left side of the garment and one for the right side of the garment as well. So we're going to go ahead and set those aside. We're going to assemble, assemble those in a, in a minute. I just want to also make sure that you have transferred all your markings. So right here, this is the sleeve piece here. So you should have two of these pieces cut out. Just make sure that you transfer those dots that's on the front of your pattern piece. So that way you know how to put your E stitches in. You're just going to go ahead and put two rows of E stitches or basting stitches up at the top here, about a quarter of an inch away from each other and a quarter. And you're going to start that first stitch about a quarter of an inch, a quarter of an inch from this edge here. And, and that's how you're going to ease your stitches in. You also want to make sure that you transfer your markings for your darts as well. 
these pieces here are really important this dark piece here is really important because it's supposed to give shaping to that neckline area you don't want to go ahead and leave that out because then your facings and everything like that will not fit around your neckline so make sure that you do that as well on both the front section of the pattern for the the, the coat you're going to have dots on the side here this is going to be where you're going to be placing your pockets. So make sure that you also have your dots transferred on the side for the front of the garment, as well as for the back as well. Lastly, you have your pocket. Just make sure that you cut that out four times. And you're also going to make sure that you transfer those notches on the pattern as well as the dots that are on the side of the pattern because that's going to let you know where you place your pockets on your coat okay so with all that said we're going to go ahead and get started and we're going to start with the facings the front and the back facings we're going to go ahead and assemble those together okay so here are the facing pieces and in order to construct these together what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and lay out the left side of the facing as well as the right side of the facing and this is the front facing so you should have two pieces that are mirrored images of one another you're going to go ahead and take your back facing piece and you're going to match it up with your front facing sections and it should look like this so we're going to start with this side here we're going to go ahead and match those pieces together and we're going to go ahead and put a pin in it to secure that together you can place pins on the edge here and one in the middle but i just decided to just use one here so you're going to do the same thing for this side as well and your facing should also have a notch in them so that can actually tell you where you can place each piece on your back and your front facing. So you'll have a notch and it'll show you how to put those pieces together. So just align those pieces like that. And then you're going to go ahead and take that to the machine and stitch that at five, eight, seven inch seam allowance. And then you're going to press that seam open. So after we take the facing to the machine and we stitch, we have stitched the back and the front facing together, we can go ahead and trim this seam. So again, make sure you press it open as well so that it lays nice and flat. So we're going to go ahead and trim this seam back. I like to trim mine's back by at least a half an inch to down to maybe a quarter of an inch. So just go ahead and trim that seam back. Now we're going to go ahead and sit this piece to the side and we're going to go ahead and work on the front section and we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the darts inside the front of the jacket here. So go ahead and assemble your darts together. Okay, so now that you have your darts in, we can go ahead and move on with applying the pockets to the front of the of the garment. But before you do, I just want to say make sure that you go ahead and press your seam of the dart and the back here should be pressed toward the armhole area. So that will make it so that your dart will lay nice and flat. You can also trim this dart down so you can reduce the bulk i'm not going to do that because my my fabric is quite thin so i'm not going to worry about that but if you are working with the heavy fabric like a boucle a wool a tweed i would suggest to go ahead and trim that down 
All right, so moving on to the pocket, we're going to go ahead and we're going to place one piece of the pocket bag along this edge here where the dots are. Okay, so you may not be able to see the dots here on mine because um, I have a blue washable fabric pen, but they are there. And also on the side of the pocket, there is a slit there or a little notch. So you're going to match that notch with the side of the notch that is on the side of your garment here. So with right sides facing, we're going to go ahead and match up those notches. We're gonna match those notches together. And then we're also going to go ahead and match the dots together as well. And you're going to do this for all four pieces for the back and the front of the jacket. And then we're going to go ahead and repeat that process for the left side of the garment for the front. Okay, so that completes the front part of the jacket. Now we need to attach the pocket bags for the back of the jacket. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take this to the machine and we're going to stitch each one of these pocket pieces onto our jacket and we're going to stitch from edge to edge so that we can have this entire pocket edge here attached to the jacket. So we're going to do a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and we're going to press that seam open and then we're going to press it back. So I'll show you how we're going to do that here in a moment. Okay, so here is my example piece here. I wanna show you. So I attached the pocket bag to one side of the back and I press the seam open so that it can be flat. Now when I press the seam open, I press it open like this so, that so it can lay flat and it can lay open like that. And then I press the seam toward the center back of the jacket. So we're going to do that for all of the pieces there. So now that we have our pockets attached to each piece of the front and the back, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pin the back sections to the front sections. But before we do that, I want to go ahead and say if you want to finish off the edge of your of your jacket on the side seams now is the time to do that you can do it with your serger or you can do a zigzag stitch if you don't have fabric that frays you don't have to use any form of um serging or a zigzag stitch to finish off these raw edges, you can just leave them. Now that we have all of that done and we have our serging done for the side seams, we can actually attach the front section to the back section. So generally I like to start with the shoulder and create that shoulder seam. So what you're going to do, you should have notches on your on the front and the back of the shoulder you're going to go ahead and put those pieces together and you're going to pin them in place make sure that the end of the back and the front match one another and then go ahead and pin that in place as well you're going to do the same for the opposite side. Just make sure the back and the front match one another at the corners. And you're going to go ahead and pin that in place as well. 
So just go ahead and pin that in place. This is going to be sewn at 5 8 7 inch seam allowance. Now let's go down to the side here. We're going down the side seams of the front and the back here. So this is the front and the back. We're going to go ahead and pin the underarm in place, matching the front and the back at the edges. Just going to go ahead and pin that in place. And then we're going to go ahead and find our notches. You should have notches or marks on your fabric. Just align those together. Pin those in place as well. You want to go down to the top right here on the edge of your, of your pocket for the front and the back. You want to go ahead and match those together. Go ahead and put a pin at the top of that pocket so that you can get ready to, to so that you can get ready to make that pocket bag. In between the notch and the pockets, go ahead and pin those in place as well. So in between the notch and the pocket, you're going to go ahead and pin the rest of the back and the front together. Now we're going to go ahead and work on that pocket bag and pin it in place as well. At the very bottom, for the front section and the back section, you're going to go ahead and find that edge for the pocket so that you can go ahead and continue to create that pocket bag here. You're going to match those together and pin that in place as well. We want to make sure that we place both the dot for the front and the back together and we're going to go ahead and place a pin right on top of that dot here and we're going to go ahead and place a pin in between the end of the pocket and that dot now when we sew the garment We're going to sew, creating a side seam here, starting at the underarm. We're going to go down and right when we get to the, the edge or the very top of this pocket here, we're going to pivot and we're going to turn and we're going to go ahead and sew the pocket in place. When we get to the very bottom, we're going to do the same. We're going to pivot and we're going to go ahead and sew down the side seam here. And we're going to stop right here at this dot and we're going to back stitch. We don't want to go no further than this dot because the bottom of the jacket is supposed to have a vent and we're going to flip that out and we're going to create a vent there. So stop at this dot and back stitch. Okay, so let's take that to the machine. We're going to go ahead and we're going to sew five, eight, seven inch, creating a shoulder seam here. We're going to go ahead and sew five, eight, seven inch, going down the side here, creating a side seam, sewing around the pocket, pivoting at the bottom, and stopping right here at this dot, we're going to back stitch at that dot. And we're going to do that for the left side of the garment, as well as for the right side of the garment. And then we will go ahead and press our seams open. And then you can also finish off the top here of your shoulder line. You can finish that raw edge off 
if you want to do like I said a zigzag stitch or uh, use your serger or pinking shears whatever finishing method you would like go ahead and do that and if you're not finishing off your seams then we'll just go wait right into the next step after pressing the garment open after we created those seams. So at this point, we should have our side seams stitched in as well as our pocket bag stitched closed. Now, there are two things that we need to do here before we move on to attaching these pieces together, these two left and right side pieces together. We're going to go ahead and trim our pocket bag a little bit and then um, you can either use pinking shears, a zigzag stitch or your serger. And then we are going to put just a small little clip right above the pocket bag here, just right here so that we can press these seams open and so that this seam here near the pocket bag can lay flat. So you're going to go ahead and put just a little snip here at the top of the pocket bag. And then you're going to do the same thing for the bottom of the pocket bag here. You also want to make sure that you press your shoulder seam flat as well. So we're going to go ahead and open out this seam here and we're going to press that flat. And after we press it flat, we're going to go ahead and trim that back. And you can trim that back about maybe a half an inch to a quarter of an inch. Now that we have the pockets done and we have all of that in place, we can assemble the garment together at the center back seam. So at the center back seam, you should have three notches that look like this, and you should have one on the left side of your garment as well as the right. We're going to go ahead and join those two together with right sides facing. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and stitch the back together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Now that we have the center back seam in the garment, we can go ahead and finish that seam allowance there. Now you could do this one of two ways. You can trim back the seam allowance and you can either pink, zigzag stitch, or use your, your overlocker or serger. Um, and so both the left and the right seam allowance together, but what is most commonly done and recommended is that you leave those seams open so you can trim that back and then either zigzag stitch pink or overlock the edge and leave the garment, leave the seam allowance open like this and let it lay light, nice and flush against the against the garment. Now, this is recommended because it reduces the bulk in the garment. Okay, so now okay. that we have the center back seam in and the garment is all nice and pressed together, we can apply the facing. Before we apply the facing, though, we want to uh, either 
serge zigzag stitch or pink the edge of the of your interfacing here of your facing piece so that the raw edges are not showing you can also turn the raw edge under about a uh, three-eighths of an inch and stitch it down and top stitch it in place so let's do that i also wanted to mention before we apply the interfacing to the garment we're going to go ahead and finish the raw edges of the bottom of the of the duster here or the jacket we're going to go ahead and finish those raw edges and the reason why we're going to do that is because once we put that facing piece on once we apply the facing this edge here is going to get once we stitch the facing in place this edge is going to get turned under and then we're going to stitch that down in place so we want to already have our edges completed before we get to that point so let's do that as well now that the edges on the bottom of the duster is surged we can go ahead and apply the interfacing around the neckline and down the center front of the garment so we're going to go ahead and take our interfacing here and we're going to match the interfacing starting with the upper area here I guess this would be like near the the upper collar where the collar would go if there was a collar but we're going to go ahead and attach that edge So at this point we need to um, hem the the vent here and the bottom of the of the duster but again just make sure that you stitch you top stitch going down the length of the jacket and I did um, go all the way down you can stop about five eighths of an inch from the edge of the jacket um, and then just go across here um, so that you can encase this down as well so that you can actually um, have that stitch down as well um, but just make sure you go ahead and you you're going to press the bottom of the hem here up five eighths of an inch so I went ahead and I searched the end of my my duster here you can zigzag stitch this pink it or do something similar so that you can um, make sure that that raw edge is nice and finished so on the side here where the vents are we're going to go ahead and press that inward at five eighths of an inch and we're going to go ahead and top stitch that down um, at the top of the vent here what we're going to do is we're going to go up about um, about three eighths of an inch or five eighths of an inch from from the very edge of this vent here and we're going to stitch across and then we're going to stitch down all the way to the very end here and we're going to stop about five eighths of an inch from the edge here and then go across the bottom of the hem here um, right 
at the bottom here so that we can also stitch the hem as we are going along. So just in case you need a visual, I just wanna show you what this looks like. So basically, um, as I said, I just put a line going on up at the top about three eight seven inch from that point here and i just put a line there and then i squared that off and so that's what you would do you would go ahead and stitch it across and stitch it down the entire length of the vent and just make sure like i said you turn your the edge here over about five eight seven inch and make sure that your your raw edge is surged or finished in some way before you stitch that down. And you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna continue that line of stitching going across the bottom of your duster so that you can also hem the bottom, the very bottom of your duster as well. So now that we have that done, we can move on to uh, inserting the sleeves. So the very first thing we're going to do with the sleeves are put the E stitches in and I'll be right back and show you how we're going to do that. So in order to put basting stitches on the sleeve here, we're going to go ahead and put two rows of stitching um, going across the sleeve head. Now these stitches are going to be basting stitches. That means we're going to put our, our stitch length at the highest number that's available on our machine and our stitch width around, I, I usually keep it about a 2.5. So that will allow for us to be able to pull those threads and ease in the amount that we need um, for our sleeve. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put those stitches in and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so here we are with the E stitches and they are about a quarter of an inch away from each other. And the first line of stitching is about a quarter of an inch away from the top edge here. So the other thing I forgot to mention is make sure that you leave yourself uh, long thread tails because you, you will need those to pull so that you can create these little gathers here at the top of the sleeve head. Let's go ahead and start with uh, stitching the underarm seam. So we're going to go ahead and put this together like so. Now on the directions, the sleeve pattern actually have two dots on the side and you're supposed to because one side of the sleeve is longer than the other and you're supposed to put e stitches on the side as well now you'll notice that i did not do that because i'm working with the ponty knit and so i i'm not going to be able to do that as you can tell here um there's no room to ease anything in um, they pretty much lay flat and um, they're even together. But you may need to ease that sleeve in if you are um, working with a non-stable knit fabric. So you just go ahead and you put those E-stitches on the side just like we did here. And then you go ahead and you ease that sleeve in so that it can fit the side of the the other side of the, the sleeve. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pin this together. We're going to go ahead and find our notches. We should have notches on our uh, sleeves here. We're going to put those together. Make sure that what I like to do in order to make sure that my sleeve is nice and straight on the underarm and that there's no bulkiness or that the, um, the seam comes out nice and straight, I start at the top where the, the top of the underarm seam here is going to go. I start there and I put a pin there, 
then I find my notch and then I go to the bottom and I match the bottom together and I pin it. So that makes it so that when I'm sewing down, down the sleeve, the bottom of my hem here won't be all wonky and I'll have enough fabric down there that it will match and everything will be nice and together and there will be no gaps anywhere. And then I like to go ahead and pin everything in between. Okay, so now we're going to get ready to insert the the sleeves. So before we do that, I just want to make mention here, just make sure that you press your seam open, just like this. So as you can see, mine is laying pretty flat, and that's because I went ahead and I pressed that down. So pressing your seams will make it so that there's no bulk on the outside of the garment and your garment lays really nice and flat and you can see the nice crisp line in that seam. So make sure you go ahead and you do that before you serge your, your ends or pink, pink them or however you finish your, your um, seams. Just make sure that you press them first. So now let's go ahead and inset the sleeve. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn our sleeve so that the right side is facing out, just like this. Now you also want to go ahead and after you've um, surged your, your seam, you also want to press it and make sure you press the seam going towards the back. So where your back notches are, you're gonna go ahead and press that seam going that way. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and take our garment here. Now you can do this um, a number of ways. You can, um, before attaching the sleeve to the garment, you can go ahead and you can pull your, your E stitches so that you have a few gathers up at the top here. So you don't want to pull it. You want to pull it enough that you um, you have some of your your fabric eased in up at the top here, but you don't want to actually have uh, gathers in your sleeve because you don't want to sew gathers in the top of the sleeve. So we want to just ease some of that fabric in. So you can do it like that, or you can wait until you attach your sleeve to the garment and then pull the E stitches and put how much you need to um, pull that into your garment. But I like to do it beforehand. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to match the underarm seam of the sleeve to the underarm seam of the garment, just like that. And we're going to pin that in place. And again, just make sure that your seam is facing the back here. So we're going to go ahead and pin that in place. Just like that. And then we're going to match our notches here. So this is the sleeve notch to the garment notch to the, the shell of the garment. We're going to go ahead and pin that in place.
And then I like to go ahead and go up to the sleeve head. And you should have at the top of the sleeve head, you should have a little dot up there and a notch. And I just like to go ahead and pin that dot and that notch, just m match those up. Again, just make sure that your seam is going towards the back and just pin that in place. And then you can just go ahead and fill everything else that's in between. If you notice that you have too much fabric, um, say for instance, if, if you feel like, um, like right here, there's a gap and there's some fabric that can be filled in, you just go ahead and you take your, your basting stitches here and you just ease some more fabric in up at the top. And then you just go ahead and you, you follow the curve of the sleeve and you just go ahead and you pin your sleeve in place. Okay, so let me go ahead and explain how we're going to do the sleeve. We're going to go ahead and we're going to flip our sleeve in. I did a 5 8 inch hem allowance here. So make sure that you have your edges already finished off. And then you're going to go ahead and take it to the machine and you're going to top stitch. You want to make sure that you catch the underside of this. So just make sure that you align the edge of your garment on the 5 8 7 inch um, hem mark or the, the 5 8 of an inch mark on your sewing plate. Okay, so here is the finished sleeve here. I just went ahead and top stitched that. Um, you don't really need to do a zigzag stitch on ponte knit. You just, um, as long as you use the longest stitch, it should be okay. And your stitches should not pop when, um, when you're wearing your garment. So that does it for this garment and for the first episode of the Sew Wardrobe series, part one. Um, if you liked this tutorial, please make sure that you give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you can receive notifications of all my videos when I post them. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions about this sew along, particularly for this jacket, just make sure that you leave me a comment in the comment section below. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed and I can't wait until we show you the next sew along. And until next time, everyone stay creative. Bye.